Hi, my name's Mark Omar and I'm an English teacher and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about a text called The Redu Reluctant Fundamentalist. I'm talking about the novel, not the film, and I'm talking about it for the purposes of writing for the VCE final exam for the text response. So there's heaps of things I'm not going to cover and this is quite a short video, so this isn't meant to be everything. First thing is that I'm doing a couple of things that you're not going to be able to do in the exam. First of all, I have a sheet of notes here next to me and I'm going to be looking down at them to remind me of things. You are not going to have the luxury of doing this in the exam, so you need to do what I am not doing, which is rereading the entire novel. I have read the novel twice and I have listened to the audiobook once. You need to have read it at least that many times, I hope, throughout the year, and I would strongly encourage you in the days before the exam to go back and reread it because there are things that you're going to pick up now that you've done all this other study that you're going to pick up it's going to be fresh in your mind don't rely on eight month old memory of this novel you're going to get yourself into all kinds of trouble you should be able to off the top of your head talk about who the main character is what his girlfriend's called what the name of the firm he worked at is what city he came from in Pakistan um, what um, the girlfriend's ex-boyfriend is called, what his boss is called, what his friend from work is called. Um, ideally, you'll be able to talk about the assignments that he went on. Now, this is a, just a basic level of understanding, but if you can't recall that his name is Changez, that his girlfriend's Erica, that her dead boyfriend is Chris, that his friend at work is Wainwright, that the guy who hired him is Jim, that he's sitting in a cafe in Lahore, which is in Pakistan, talking to... Um, Who's he talking to? He's talking to the American, the unnamed American, uh, who we call the American rather than just an American because he's a very important figure in this and he's just not named as anything else. You need to be able to just take this stuff off the top of your head. This isn't going to get you a good mark in and of itself, but it's a necessary precondition. You must be able to talk about this confidently pretty much instantly um, by the time you go into the exam because it frees you up to talk about the novel in a more sophisticated sense. Now, talking about the novel at a more sophisticated level. The novel is, novel is created, and this is where I look at my notes, by Moshin Hamid. And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but I'll, you can, you, in fact, you should go and look up how to spell it. I'm not going to give it to you. You go and look it up because you're the one going and rereading the book. But you would um, refer to him the first time as Moshin Hamid, and from there on in you refer to him simply as Hamid. So Hamid constructs this and Hamid constructs that. And what Hamid has constructed is two stories. One is a framing story, and I want you to, to latch onto that because that's an important term. The framing story is the is Changez sitting in the cafe in Lahore talking to the American. And this story basically happens at the end of everything. And then within that story, within that frame, if you like, which is why we call it a framing story, is the piece itself, which is Changez telling his story about how he grew up and mainly what he did with America and how he became disillusioned with America. So to show a sophisticated response, you're going to want to distinguish between those two stories. So one is the framing story and the other is Changez's story. So Hamid creates Changez telling the story, but when we listen to, when we read the book, we're not hearing the author speak to us. It's not like those books where somebody's just viewing it as if they're God and describing what's going on. The only voice we hear is Changez's voice. That's all that Hamid creates, and Changez, this creation, tells us everything, even what's happening in the framing story. Anyhow, I'm back from the dog barking. So I was talking about how this entire story is narrated. The narrator is Changez, and I think, and you know what, not everybody says this, but I don't think that Changez is a reliable narrator. In fact, I think he's what we call in um, studies of books an unreliable narrator. He's not being completely straightforward with us because he's actually only partly talking to us. The way the framing story works is that he's talking to the American. But all we see is just like you see me here. You see me talking to you, but you don't see the other side of the thing. So you only have what I've got to believe in. And Changez is like this. He's constructing this story for his audience, which is the American. And he's in a situation where, certainly from what he says, he fears for his life. He keeps intimating and suggesting that this American is sent here to kill him. And you know what? That might be true. It might not be true. He might, you know, this guy might be somebody else. Which actually leads me to a 
point that I think is really important. There is a film out of this. Now, I have not seen this film, and I have deliberately not seen this film, and I strongly encourage you, don't watch the film before you go into the exam. <clears throat> and the reason I say this is not because I think it's going to be a bad film, but because there are things that this book does that the film just can't do. For instance, in the film, the American is pretending to be a journalist. And then the suspicion in the film is, is he really a journalist or is he really an assassin or a CIA agent or, you know, anything like that. That's got nothing to do with the book. Like, the book is just pure Changez. Everything we learn about the American, we learn from Changez. Whereas in the film, we're going to see the American, we're going to get our own impression of him. Does he look like he's a spy? Does he look like a journalist? Whereas in the book, we're seeing everything through Changez's speech. But once you get into the world of the film, because a film is a different thing that's created, and they, they're not limited in the same way. There is the occasional film where we have an unreliable narrator and it works in film. Um, Fight Club's a good example. But from what I understand about this film, it isn't using the same techniques. So my real concern is that you're going to get yourself confused between what you saw in the film, because film's a really powerful medium. You know, I remember every scene of pretty much every film I've ever seen with what's in the book. If, you can, if you've stayed away from the film this long, please stay away from it <clears throat> until you do the exam. If you want to go back and watch it after that, just so that you can see how they made a film out of it, that sounds like a great idea to me. But my really strong advice is don't watch the film now. I think that it will um, confuse you. So, Changes. Changes is the unreliable narrator tells the American this story about how he becomes, <clears throat> I guess, this reluctant fundamentalist, although the phrase is never used in the book. When we think about reluctant, we think about somebody who doesn't really want to do something, but they do it anyway. And this sits really starkly at odds with the term fundamentalist. Like a fundamentalist is, in our popular expression, they're a hardcore person. A fundamentalist actually just means somebody who lives by the fundamentals, you know, the basic principles of something. But in the last 15 years in particular, a fundamentalist is kind of almost code for, it, well, it is, it is code for an Islamic fanaticist a hardline believer in Islam who may or may not, but probably is involved in terrorist activity. And so when we say that you're a, this, this is what fundamentalist means in our imagination, and then you're reluctant, that kind of sets up the tension that drives the story. And as the story opens, Chanchez tells us, but remember, he's, look, he's at the end of the story and he's coming back and telling us the start of it, because the framing story is up here. And then he kind of does the whole thing in flashback. And he's there and he's saying, you know, I love America. I wanted to come to America. And he's telling us. But the man who's telling us is already embittered and kind of has decided that America is the bad guy. So when he's telling us about himself back here, he's telling us about this person who's having digs at America as he goes. Like the Chanchez who goes through the story doesn't start off, America's great and then it all goes downhill to here. He's always kind of yes and no. He's ambivalent about America. You know, he goes there because he's basically fleeing po poverty and obscurity in his own country. He goes there because of the opportunities. He does it tough. He's not a rich, spoiled kid, but he is from a wealthy background. Um, he gets there, he meets his girlfriend, um, Erica, and again, is, does she want him or doesn't she? It's a bit like he's, and Erica is very much, you know, it sounds like America. Erica wants him, but not too much. Just like America will have him there because he was in the top, you know, the top of his class in Pakistan. He was like one of the top four or five students in Pakistan. So, of course, he can come to America, but he doesn't get much financial aid and he has to work different jobs and he's never fully accepted. A bit like Erica, who, yeah, you can hang around with me, but you're not fully my boyfriend. So, you know, very much Erica represents, you know, what he th feels about America is very much what he feels about Erica. He's struck by the beauty and grandeur of the place, but just as he has stabs at America, you know, he talks about how the students there weren't as smart as he thought they'd be, how the buildings were dressed up to look as old, whereas in his country they really had thousands of years of history. And he even has dig digs about Erica. You know, she's very, very... Um, She's very pretty and he's very struck with her, but when he finally reads her story, her little novella, it's really superficial. It's just, there's not that much to her. And also, she's just not a particularly nice person. Like, if you read it, if you can get past her infa his infatuation with her, there's not much to Erica. So, the, from the framing story, he tells us this story about how he basically goes from, I love America, to, you know what, I'm really quite suspicious about America. In fact, I'm now campaigning um, against it. So, 
I guess that's the stuff, you know, read through it, get yourself conversant with who does what. Look at that real ambivalence in the story that, you know, love America, love America, you know, have a dig, have a dig, have more digs. He obviously is radicalised in part by the events of September 11, the terrorist attacks on the World Trade Centre. You know, there really was, I mean, you guys were, were young at the time, but there really was a massive reaction to it. It was a horrifying event, but people reacted in almost as horrifying a way. And it became this really scary environment where we looked intensely at people to see if they are our enemies. And, you know, Changes feels that. And instead of drawing him back into American life, that tension, in fact, pushes him out of American life. And as much as anything, he pushes himself out. You know, he does everything in his power to be useless for the firm that he's working for. Oh, actually, while I'm talking about Underwood Sampson, Underwood Sampson's really important. What they do is they're a bunch of really intelligent people trying to work out what something is really worth, what the value of something is, what its true nature is. And this is basically the position that Hamid is putting us in as a reader, giving us a lot of data and saying, what is Changez? Is Changez a foreign student who got burnt out? Is he a bad guy? Like, you can't just look at something and say, it's worth X dollars. Or, you know, this is good or bad or in the middle. You know, that the world can't be boiled down to a single figure. But also what Underwood Sampson do is they do take all that complex information and they boil it down. And he's kind of challenging that. Um, you know, that's the fundamentalism that he's reluctant, that um, Changez is reluctant about, is the American fundamentalism saying a company is only worth the dollar number we can boil it down to. That everything and everybody is down to just a single figure. And, you know, not all of America is like that, but the financial part that Changez is in is... And against this, he has this big, rich culture, and he's basically saying, America on one hand, whoomph, down to the number, big, expressive culture of other parts of the world. You know, our food is wonderful, everything's great. He bangs, he's very proud of his culture. So, whereas Underwood Sampson boil everything down to a dollar, I think that Hamid is asking us to say, you know what, we can't just boil people who we see a clip of on TV denouncing America down to they're just a bad person. Or indeed, it's naive to say they're an entirely good person, because I don't think Changez is. I actually think he's selfish and pretty horrible in lots of ways. So, there's some thoughts. I've got some more stuff on Red Space Rocket for you to read. Um, read the book. Go and find other people talking about it. Talk to each other about it. You need that basic stuff to get a basic mark, but if you want a mark up here, you've got to be able to have a sophisticated discussion. You've got to be able to talk about... I expect you're going to need to talk about where the reliability of um, Changez as a narrator because he's got no reason to be completely honest. He's in a situation where the high stakes, like, who cares what his story is? He's in the cafe with somebody who he thinks might try and kill him. Or, covert, con conversely, he might try and kill. So, um, I think it's a complicated text. Really, go back and have another look at it. I hope this video is helpful to you. If there's anything you want to ask, I'm, I'll do the best I can. Uh, feel free to leave a comment on YouTube or something. And that's it. Good luck with the exam. Um, Please use all your time in the exam. Be careful about how you structure your time. I would probably leave your um, text response to last because in some ways it's the easiest to write. Stay in there for the whole exam. Like you've got your whole life ahead of you. Don't steal an hour from your English score just so that you've got an hour to mess around. Like you've got the whole rest of your life to mess around and you know, sit on the couch and make videos. So that's it from me and good luck.